soul winning and the mind your mind soul winning and the mind the mind is a battlefield for the devil as he tries to defeat us from winning the loss to christ we need to recognize his tactics and understand how to protect ourselves in this war God's word has a lot to say about our minds, especially concerning winning the loss. So um, oftentimes, okay, the Bible talks about quitting, right? In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, it says, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. When do people quit? It's when they quit in their mind. That's what happens. When do people get angry? It's usually right there in their mind. Um, when do people, you know, when are they defeated? Like, I'm not going to see anybody saved today. Why even bother go out? And I'm just going through the routine, and this ain't doing any good. And It's all in your mind. It is all in your mind. And the Bible tells us that the devil comes to our mind, and he tries to tempt us, put thoughts there, tries to get us sidetracked. And so your mind has a lot to do with you being a successful soul winner. So, for example, if it's been months or years since you've personally led someone to the Lord, chances are you're defeated in your mind right now. Like, it ain't, I ain't going to see anybody saved today. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you're, you're going to be defeated or victorious today, and it's going to start in your mind. So you've got to have the right kind of mindset in order to be a successful soul winner. Again, I've told you all things like this in the past. I've been soul winning now for over 18 years every day, and this is my 19th year of doing it. I don't think I'm not going to see someone saved today. I mean, in my mind, it's already done. I'm going to see somebody saved today. And I have that mindset. And so it helps tremendously to have the proper mindset. So let me give you seven thoughts when it comes to soul winning and the mind. Number one, a right mind through Christ. A right mind through through Christ. In Mark chapter 5, verse 15, it says, And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Okay, so this is talking about the maniac of Gadara. What was his, what, one of his problems? He was in the wrong mindset, and he was possessed of the devil. Now, a lot of times when people think of being possessed of the devil or oppressed by the devil, that it's like Hollywood stuff. You know, your voice changes and you start having unusual strength or you start doing things that you would never do, a lot of times that's just overblown. And that's extreme cases. In the Bible, there were cases like the maniac of Gadara where you know he, he lived in the tombs, he was hurting himself, cutting himself, and he had a legion inside of him. But that's not the common way the devil gets to us. The common way is he gets to us in our mind and we're not in the right mind. We're just thinking wrong. And so when you come to Christ, like this maniac of Gadara did, when you come to Christ, you have an opportunity to have the right mindset. And so every day you need to come to Christ, and here's what you need to pray. Lord, help me to think right. Help me to have a proper mindset. And through Christ, you can. What does the Bible say in Philippians 2? Um, well, we're going to, uh, no, we're not going to read it. Um, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you can actually come to Christ and say, Jesus, let me have your mind. We know every time I preach, you know, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit and the mind of Christ. Well, that's how you can do it when you go soul winning. You know, ask God to give you the right mind, and you can get it through Christ. So you come to Christ, and you want the right mind. Number two, a ready mind to believe the word. A ready mind to believe the word. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Okay, when it comes to soul winning, you need to have a ready mind to believe the word. Okay, for example, God tells us to go into all the world, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, right? So your mind needs to be ready to receive that. So as you go out soul winning today, just like what Miss Kim alluded to, you know, you got back in the car, was ready to go, and then you just saw three, a, a group of people and thought, let's go talk to them. Well, every person you come in contact with is a candidate, a possible 
candidate to be saved. Because God says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what the Bible says. So you need to have a ready mind to believe that and uh, to understand that the word of God is for you. You know, the Bible tells us that, you know, he's made us watchmen. And we're supposed to warn the lost about Christ and about, uh, about hell and uh, warn them about the judgment to come. And if we warn them, our, our hands are clean. If we don't warn them, we've got bloody hands, right? So you've got to be able to have a mind that's ready to believe the word. And the fact that people do get saved, the Bible says, um, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. So God doesn't just expect you to warn the lost. He expects you to win souls. And you've got to have a ready mind to believe the word. In other words, the word of God is for you. It's not for the preacher only, for somebody else it's for you. And the Bible says the people in Thessalonica, uh, or the, the people at Berea, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica because every time they heard the word, they received it with all readiness of mind. And that's what you and I've got to do when it comes to soul winning. Number three, a same mind in unity with others. A same mind in unity with others. 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Okay, we're gathered together today. Why? Because we're going to go soul winning as a church. It's so important for us when we go out that we're unified in the same mind. So in other words, both of you, your partner and you, um, what you do is you go out and you say, we want to see people saved. We want people to come to our church. We want God to do something great. And we've got to be unified in the same mind. Now, not just purpose unity, but also belief unity. We've got to be on the same page with, with, with salvation, you know, how someone gets saved. You know, we can't be going out there, some of us telling people they got to repent of their sins, some of us telling people that just ask Jesus into your heart and that's all it takes, and then some of us saying, you know, ask Jesus to save you from hell. I mean, no, we've got to be unified on this. We've got to be on the same mind with the gospel, with salvation, and with the same purpose, the same mind in unity with others. And that's why, that's why it's so important to come to Churchwide Soul Winning, because we're unified here, and we're going out there as an army. When you go soul winning just by yourself, that's okay, but, but you know, there's, there's a benefit to being unified with brothers and sisters in Christ, and that, that strength that you get from more than one. And so, uh, same mind in unity with others. Number four, now this is huge, ready? A lowly mind, void of strife. A lowly mind, void of strife. Look what it says, Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Okay, when it says let nothing be done, does that include soul winning? I think it does. So let it, let it never be that you go soul winning and it says through strife or vainglory. There's some people that, you know, not very many people in our church, but some people have come here over the time and a lot of people just in general, they like to go out and argue with the lost, you know, and they want to, you know, well, that's just not right. You're not right for doing that. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example. I went, um, I went, I led this one guy to the Lord one time and I, uh, one of our, church members at the time he, he no longer is here but he had met him before me the week before me all right so he went to him and he was talking to him about his faith do you know for sure if he died today you'd go to heaven and such and he said well my i think he said my wife is in heaven and he said something like i went to the grave the other day and i was talking to my wife and um and then so the soul winner from our church again he's no longer here but was here at the time he just looked at him and said, you should never do that. Don't talk to dead people. You know, he just said that to him. Well, guess what? He didn't get to win him to Christ because he was going out with strife. If someone's doing the rosary, if someone has a picture, like, it's like this. If you, have a if you knock on a door and someone has a crucifix on their wall, well, here's an example of what not to do. You don't go soul winning and say, you know, you shouldn't have that on your wall. That's, that's idolatry. You should never have Jesus on a cross. Okay, that's not what we're supposed to be doing with soul winning at all. Now, going back to the story of that man, 
I, I looked at him and I said, wow. I said, I'm so sorry that he said that to you. I said, he was a young convert. He just, you know, just learning how to do it. And he probably just didn't understand how to, how to talk about things like that. I said, I would never tell you that you're doing something wrong about that. That's not why I'm here. I want you to know for sure you're going to heaven. Has anybody ever showed you the verses? And he said, no. And I said, can I show you please? And he said, sure. And I got to lead him to Christ. He got saved. Now, wait a second. He could have gotten saved a week ago, but the way the soul winner approached it was with strife, you know? Okay, if I talk to someone and they say, I say to them, do you, you and your family go to church around here? And they say something like, oh yeah, me and my family are Catholic. I say, oh, you go to St. John? They say yes, and here's what I almost always say. Man, that's a big church. There's a lot of people that go there, aren't there? And they're like, yeah, and then I go on. Now, what I didn't do was say, that's the mother of harlots. What are you doing going there for? You're going to go to hell if you believe their doctrine. You know, I, that's just strife. That's just wrong, right? So here's the thing. It says in lowliness of mind. Do you know what the word lowliness means? Or synonym? Humility. To be humble. Just be humble. When you go out and talk to people about the Lord, have a humble mind. Don't be going around trying to tell people all the ways that they're wrong. You know, have a humble mind. Now, if someone attacks you verbally, if someone is contrary, still have a humble mind. The Bible says a soft answer turneth away wrath. If someone is contrary and you've got a humble mind and, you're, and you respond in humility, it may be that the, the, it, the conversation will turn for the better. It may not be, but then you just go on to the next person, but you always have lowliness of mind when you go soul winning. Be humble when you talk to people. Next, number five, a steady mind to not be shaken. A steady mind to not be shaken. Second Thessalonians 2.2, 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. You know, as I pastor this church for 30 years, there's a lot of Christians who are shaken in their mind. They could be shaken from current events. Oh, the solar eclipse, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? You know, on Monday, man, it's gonna happen. Whatever it is is gonna happen, it's gonna happen. It, it's, the Lord's coming back, fine. Oh, praise God, let, let him come Monday. I, how many of you would like to go to heaven on Monday? <laughs> I'm ready to go, man, I am ready to go. There's nothing I desire in this world anymore. I mean, let's go to heaven, amen? But the fact of the matter is, well, what if the, you know, I've had, I have people tell me this week, uh, I was in my uh, chaplain duty, and uh, this one guy at this one company I go to, he is nothing but a conspiracy theorist. I mean, like, constantly the government's wrong the government's this the government's that every time i meet him sometimes i don't even want to talk to him because he's just going to tell me something new and uh but he was like i'm like hey man how's it going this week he's like great y'all know you know what's going to happen on monday don't you i'm like what and he's like well the, with the solar eclipse i said tell me you know i'm trying to be friendly to him right and he's like well the government's going to shoot this stuff up in the sky and they're gonna they're gonna open a portal for the demonic world to come in. And, and we haven't opened that portal in, in decades, and now we're gonna do it. I'm like, wow, man, that's interesting. I said, hey, can I tell you what happened to me last week? He said, what? I said, I went to McDonald's, and I did something I've never done before. He said, what'd you do? I said, as an adult, I ate a kid's meal. And he went, you did? I said, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. The mom, his mom wasn't very happy with me about it. And, uh, and, then, and then there was no more conspiracy theory coming. Out. <laughs> then he laughed. I said, that's my dad joke for the week, you know. And I said, I'll pray for you, brother. You know, and I laughed. And I just tried to turn the conversation around. But, but, but here's the thing. Um, a steady mind. Man, I don't care what happens on Monday. The government tries to shoot something into the sky and open some kind of portal. You know, maybe that's all right. That's, I just, that's our way out. Maybe that's when the rapture takes place. I don't know. But at any rate, don't be shaken. Have a steady mind. Don't be shaken in fear of what's going on in your life. Or, oh, I, you know, I'm just never going to be a good soul winner. Don't be shaken. Be steady. What did Paul say? I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. You know, have that steadiness. You know, God loves me. Just stop Stop being nervous about if God loves you or not. Have a steady mind, not to be shaken. You'll be a better soul winner if you are. Number six, a girded mind 
to have hope, a girded mind to have hope. First, uh, first Peter chapter 1, verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word girded there is talking about, you know, having, having your mind um, um, ready and, 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 f- and for souls to be saved, but then it says, and hope to the end. Okay, have a positive mind. Have a hopeful outlook. We are going to see someone saved today. Have your mind girded with hope. You know, we're going to do some good today. We're going to pass out a track, and someone's going to read it and get saved. We're going to invite someone to church, and they are going to come to church. I mean, we have that optimism, that positiveness, that hope. Have a girded mind to have hope. We are going to do some good today. You know, um, often I tell people before you go soul winning, how many of you um, um, believe God wants to see someone saved today? Would you raise your hand? All right. How many of you want to see someone saved today? All right. All right. I do. All right. How many of you believe that someone out there within driving distance, within reach of us, someone wants to be saved? Oh, man, I believe that someone out there wants to be saved. All right. Then you've got to pray a prayer. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. Help me to cross the path of someone who wants to be saved. Help me to lead them to you. You've got to have that hope. If you go out there and say, man, nobody, nobody wants to know. Nobody's going to get saved. Nobody, nobody's going to come to church. We're going to invite them, and they're going to say they're going to come, and they're not going to come. Well, that means you, you, you're defeated already in your mind. You've got to have your mind girded with hope. And then number seven and last, a sound mind to be led of the Spirit. A sound mind to be led of the Spirit. Second Timothy 1, seven. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So uh, we got to have a sound mind. Make sure that you know who the Holy Spirit is and that he's inside of you and that you're yielded to him and that you're dependent upon him for, for his power. You know, be sound to be led of the Spirit. When we go out, you know, pray. Holy Spirit, tell us where to go. What doors do we knock on? Um, if you're driving down the street and there's someone walking down the sidewalk, allow the Holy Spirit to tell you if he wants to. Pull over and go talk to him. I mean, have a sound mind to be led of the Spirit. So, the seven things this morning, a right mind through Christ, a ready mind to believe the Word, a same mind in unity with others, a lowly mind void of strife, a steady mind to not be shaken, a girded mind to have hope, and a sound mind to be led of the Spirit. Often, the battle is won or lost before we leave this building when we go soul winning. Often, the battle's already won or it's already lost. Properly prepare your mind to see someone saved and you will have a better chance of success. So, soul winning and the mind. Be in the right mindset and you'll have a lot better chance. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. <sighs> for allowing us to go soul winning. Thank you for each person who showed up for the soul winning rally. And I pray that you bless us now. Help us to be in the right